How strong is Donkey Kong? He's a pretty tough ape, but I gotta know. When he tosses the landscape, how far will it go? How much weight can he carry? How far can he throw? Can he clear out a quarry with a single blow? Okay, DK, Donkey Kong. What feats of strength could this monkey achieve? Can he do things you could never believe? DK, Donkey Like, could he Kong. win a lifting competition or defeat the corporation, stop a train's acceleration, knock the moon from its location, achieve nuclear fission, rewrite physics foundation? Could he be our salvation and be this abomination? Wait, seriously, what's the, who's that guy? What's Donkey the deal? I don't know. Kong. The people have asked, so you're gonna know. I'm DJ Charlie here to say hello. I've got all the math. Let's get on with the show. Hey, Richard. Hit that intro. This video was suggested by Captain Kirby and voted on by all my patrons. Link in the description down below if you want to support. Who asked a very simple question. How strong is Donkey Kong? No, no, I'm not doing the rap again. Okay, that seems simple enough. In the newest game, he can pull rocks out of the ground and shatter boulders with a single swing. That seems pretty strong to me. Just do a little research into the sheer and tensile strength of different rocks and call it a day. But then, in the Patreon-exclusive Discord server, Again, link in the description. Captain Kirby presented some pretty compelling evidence. Which seems just a tad bit stronger. So today, we're gonna find just how strong Donkey Kong would have to be to punch the moon clean out of orbit. Though I must warn you, Captain Kirby, for I fear that you know not what you have asked. See, punching a moon out of orbit is not as simple as punching a moon. Get your notebooks out, because I'm about to open a whole can of physics on you. Our eventual end goal is to find the force required to do, well, this. And the first step in that journey is to figure out just how big this moon is, which is, a little bit trickier to figure out than you might think, considering it radically changes sizes no less than four times in the span of one minute. Look, you clicked on a video about a cartoon ape punching the moon. There's gonna be some jank here. If we freeze this clip here, we get a frame with both Donkey Kong and the moon in it. And now, we can't see the whole moon, but we can see enough of the curvature to extrapolate the rest. Using Donkey Kong as our measuring stick, let's calculate the size of this moon. The closest thing to an official height for Mr. Kong was from Donkey Kong 64, where a sentient microphone billed him at 7 feet 1 inch and 800 pounds before his boxing match against King K. Rule. Absolutely insane sentence, but come on! You think this guy would lie to you? In this screenshot, Donkey Kong measures 54 pixels tall, and the moon in its entirety is 2,200 pixels. Plugging that into this simple proportion, we can find that the moon in this game has a diameter of 288.58 feet, or 87.96 meters. Now, admittedly, there are some issues with the perspective here. DK is a lot closer to the frame, which may make him appear larger. So let's round this up to a cool 100 meters. For reference, our own moon has a diameter of 3,475 kilometers. So, you know, this might not be as impressive as you think. Now that we know the size of the celestial body in question, the next step is to find its mass. Let's assume that this moon has about the same density as our own, 3,344 kilograms per cubic meter. Density is simply equal to an object's mass in kilograms divided by its volume in meters cubed, hence the unit kilograms per meter cubed. 
That gets you the formula D equals M over V. We can plug in our known density, calculate the volume of this sphere using the radius that we measured, and solve for M to find that this object, DK is five knuckles shuffling out of the sky, has a mass of 1.82 billion kilograms. That's a lot! So, the Donkey Kong world has a 100 meter long, 2 million ton chunk of rock floating out in space. Compared to most moons, it's absolutely tiny. Heck, it's smaller than a lot of asteroids, but it's still a natural body that orbits a planet, so it still counts as punching a moon. Now, for the fun part. What will it take for DK to punch that smug son of a gun out of the sky? Well, before we can answer that, we first need to figure out what's keeping it up there in the first place. Orbital mechanics may seem a bit confusing, but it's really just a balance of two things. Momentum, which is the tendency for a moving object to stay in motion, and gravity, which seeks to pull objects towards a large center of mass. If you have an object out in space that's moving really fast, its momentum will seek to carry it in a straight line. However, at the same time, the gravity of Earth is seeking to pull it down. If gravity is stronger, the object will fall. If momentum is stronger, it will fly off into space. But if the two are perfectly balanced, your object will begin to orbit, perpetually falling towards Earth while at the same time being carried away from it by its own momentum. The momentum of an object is equal to its mass times its velocity, while the force of gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the planet. So if you want to deorbit something, you got two options. You can slow it down, or you can take a page out of DK's book and knock it closer. Now, I know this may come as a bit of a shock, but the game about an ape punching a small moon out of space is a tad bit unrealistic. I know, I know. In the game, Donkey Kong punches the moon and it falls straight down. At first, that may seem believable enough. If you punch down, the moon's gonna go down. But knowing what we now know about orbit, you might be able to see the problem here. When the force of gravity and momentum are in perfect balance, an object will orbit in a circle. But if you disrupt that balance and let gravity start to win out, the orbit will change to an ellipse, a squashed circle with a larger radius and a smaller one. The greater the force you apply, the narrower the ellipse will be. And if we can narrow it such that the smaller radius, known as the perigee, is less than the radius of the Earth, then the moon will come crashing down. So, we just need to calculate the downward force required to make this happen. First, let's assume that DK's Earth is roughly the same as ours in size and gravitational pull, and that this moon is in low Earth orbit. Believe me, this will make our job way easier. So with that in mind, here are all the values that we know. We know that the mass of our moon is 1.82 billion kilograms. It's orbiting around a planet the same size as Earth, with a mass of 5.97 quintillion kilograms and a radius of 6.37 million meters. If our object is in low Earth orbit, it is roughly 400,000 meters above the surface of the Earth. Adding that to the Earth's radius, that means that our moon is 6.77 million meters from the Earth's center of gravity. We'll call this our initial radius, or RI. Let's say that Donkey Kong's punch applies some instantaneous change in velocity to the moon. In math, a change in something is usually denoted by the symbol delta, 
so we'll call this change in velocity delta v. Our goal is to find a delta v that will cause the perigee radius of our ellipse to be less than Earth's radius. The perigee radius of an orbiting body can be calculated using this formula. H is the angular momentum of the orbiting object, mu is the gravitational parameter of the planet it's orbiting, and E prime is the eccentricity of the moon after it's been punched. That's a lot, I know, but don't worry. I'm one of those cool teachers that lets you bring notes to the test. Now you may notice that none of these variables match our known values. Not a problem though, let's just take each thing that we don't know and work backwards until we get to something that we do know. Starting with the angular momentum. Angular momentum is exactly like linear momentum that we discussed earlier, only for things that are spinning. It can be found by multiplying the distance of the object from the point it's spinning around by the tangential velocity. We already know that this distance is our ri from earlier, so we can just go ahead and plug that in. We don't know the moon's tangential velocity, but we can calculate it by taking the square root of the planet's gravitational parameter divided by the initial radius. The gravitational parameter represents the strength of the planet's gravitational pull. And it's actually pretty easy to find. Just multiply the mass of the planet in question by this number. Again, that will not be on the test. So we can find that the gravitational parameter for a planet like Earth is equal to around 3.98 times 10 to the 14th meters cubed per second squared. Plug that number back in here to find our initial velocity, and plug that back in here for the angular momentum. And look, that's already two steps of this scary equation done, because guess what? We already found mu when looking for the velocity. Now all that's left is to calculate the eccentricity. Oh no. Now this formula seems scary, but eccentricity is really just a measure of how squashed an orbit is, and it's determined by the balance between the object's angular momentum and the pull of gravity from the planet. One other thing called specific energy. In physics, specific just means per unit mass. So the specific energy of an object is simply its energy divided by its mass. And it can be calculated using this formula. This first term represents the kinetic energy per unit mass, and the second represents gravitational potential energy. We know mu, we know our radius, and the change in velocity is the value that we're looking for, buried deep within an equation, in an equation, in an equation. And now it's time for a crap ton of algebra. Let's expand some of these variables so that they're all in terms of things that we know, and then try to get the delta velocity alone. I'll spare you the whole process, but I will give you some tips to solve any algebra equation. If you want to move some part of the equation to the other side, just change it to its opposite. If something is added on one side, subtract it from the other. If it's multiplied, divide it. If it's squared, square root everything. At that point, well, it's really just like a puzzle, finding the right order to move things over so you can get the term you're looking for alone. Once we do that, we can just plug in all of our known values, grab a calculator, because we're not barbarians, and get our answer. So, plugging in our known radii and gravitational constants, we can find that Donkey Kong will need to apply an instantaneous inward change of velocity of 482 meters per second, or 1,078 miles per hour, which... Yeah, I'll be honest, I have no idea how strong that is either. So let's find a way to turn this into a unit of force. There are a lot of ways to calculate a force, 
but perhaps the most useful in our case is by finding the impulse. In physics, the impulse is the measure of a force applied over a given amount of time. It's useful when looking at things like impacts and collisions. The shorter the impulse, the more, uh, you know, death and destruction awaits you. If the impulse is equal to the force times the change in time, and then we can rearrange this to say that force is equal to impulse over time. And as it turns out, impulse can also be calculated by multiplying the mass times the change in velocity, which we just calculated. So the force of this punch is equal to the mass of the moon times the change in velocity all divided by the time over which that force was applied. In the game, precisely 3.23 seconds pass from when DK first hits the moon to when it starts falling. And so, plugging all of that in, we can finally find that Donkey Kong is punching that moon with, at a bare minimum, 271 billion newtons, or around 61 billion pounds of force. That is the equivalent of being punched by 450,000 jets at once. It's the thrust of 8,000 Saturn V rockets. Uh, no, me from the beginning, DK can't lift the Great Pyramid. He can lift five. Uh, so yeah, I think it's safe to say that the original DK rap didn't lie. If he hits you, it's gonna hurt. Or maybe it actually wouldn't hurt that bad because you would just be instantly disintegrated. So, I hope that answers your question, Captain Kirby. And Richard, play me out. And a massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon, including Alex, Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for to Win, Captain Kirby, Sidian, Sherry and Mark, Stylish, The Boss Killer94, Tie Studio, Tricks of Crows, and Mokiubu. <laughs>